Hello, welcome to Language Professora. It has been a while, hasn't it? Yes, I missed you all too. Now, I want to branch out a little bit from the usual content that we're accustomed to seeing because primarily when I thought about creating this channel, it was really to meet the needs as they arose. And so there is a need right now coming in the form of my friend whose little brother has just started high school and English literature is one of the subjects that he has to do. Of course, kids in this era, they absolutely hate to read. So he is a YouTube fanatic. I thought of putting it on YouTube. Now, what is it that we're going to be looking at in this video today? A little introduction to literature for kids who absolutely hate to read. So if you have one of those, this video is just for them. Let's get into it. What is literature? When you think about it, is it just a boring subject? A subject that has you having to do a lot of reading and the things that you are reading, you really don't understand. You know what I mean? But what is it really? Let's take a look. First and foremost, literature is a collection of written work. The origin of the word literature is actually stemming from the word that means letters, as in ABC, so on and so forth. So when you think about literature, you're thinking about all of these letters put together to form words, put together to form sentences, paragraphs, and the whole gamut. So it's a collection of any written work. And that goes for both fiction and nonfiction. It's also used specifically when you're talking about an art form, as in the case with the high school curriculum. In the high school curriculum, there are three um, areas, genres, for want of a better way of putting it, that are discussed in literature. I usually call them the three Ps. You have your prose, which consists of your novels and your short stories. You have your plays, which is the drama aspect of it. I remember in high school, I did William Shakespeare and man, it was hard. And then of course you have your poems, which are like your verse. I often say that poems are songs without the music put to it. And in this day and age, it includes both print and digital writing. So if it is a physical book, it's literature. If it's an e-book, it is still literature. Of course, as I mentioned, it can be fiction or non-fiction. Um, you're going to find when you go into academia that you have bodies of work in terms of scientific research and the literature associated with different kinds of research and stuff like that. So literature is pretty wide when it comes on to what it really is. But in the high school setting, we bring it down narrowly to these three art forms, your novels or your short stories, which are your prose, your plays and your poems. Now, how can a student, how can a child who absolutely hates to read kind of wrap their mind around literature and, you know, figure it's not so bad after all. I can give it a shot. How do we study literature? First and foremost, and I know this one, it may be a little bit like, huh? Really? Yes, really. First and foremost, read for enjoyment. Read just to be entertained by the story. Read to have a good laugh. Read to be pulled into the, the mystery that is unfolding. Read without having to think about, okay, I'm only reading this because I have to read it for class or I have a test coming up or I need to know this material. Read without all of that added pressure, just for enjoyment and entertainment. After you have done being entertained, 
then you need to get serious. So the next time you read, you want to know what is happening in the story. This is the plot, generally speaking. And when you think about the plot of a story, it sort of kind of informs and brings in the other elements that you're going to have to be identifying as you go. But once you know the plot, which is what is happening in the story, you kind of will know what the other elements are. So, who are the people? Those are your characters. And you will see the characters coming out in the plot. Where is the story taking place? That's your location setting. When is the story taking place? That's your time setting. And ultimately, what lesson or message is the story sending? I must point out that Generally speaking, if you're reading for entertainment, as in the piece that you're reading is strictly for entertainment, you may not necessarily find a theme coming out. But what you find is in high school, the novel or the play or the prose or the, the poem or whatever it is that is selected, there is usually an underlying theme or message or lesson something that the story is surrounding so your theme is very important to the story in a nutshell that's it literature is just a collection of written works things that um you will find in every aspect of life pretty much in the high school setting we have three areas that we study which is your prose that consists of your novels and your short stories you have your plays which is your drama you have your points, which is your verse. And when studying literature, first of all, enjoy what you're reading. Then you delve into unfolding, unpacking, unwrapping, and really digging into the other elements of the story. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to begin looking at the different elements in a story. So make sure you come back for that one. If that is all that you need to know, that is all that I need to share. So have a good one until the next video.